Alrighty, this is going to be part 4 of Xeno Saga, episode 1. What do you all think? Joachim is Rahi the lunatic? Was Daddy really like that? Since Daddy built us, does that mean we aliens are bad people too? Momo, we were looking all over for you. Hello, Xion. What's wrong? You look kind of down. Xion, I... I was created by Yoaki Mizrahi. He designed the 100 series Realians back when the Federation funded him. I know. Xi'an, I... Daddy wasn't a lunatic. I don't even know what I am. Identity Diffusion. The Eternal Dilemma. Do you know about the environmental bugs on board this ship? They're actually nanomachines, you know. Used to keep enclosed spaces like this clean. I'd say that of all the things Professor Mizrahi or anyone else created, they rank up there pretty high. These bugs may be man-made, but they function as if they've existed all along. Almost as if they were meant to be. I think realians are the same. The only difference between us is the length of our histories. But regardless of our origins, each one of us has an important role to fulfill in this world. Besides, I really doubt Dr. Mizrahi was a dangerous person like everyone makes him out to be. And it's not just because of the environmental bugs. The work he did on realians was incredibly insightful. The fundamental gnosis research Professor Misrahi left behind played a critical role in the development of modern anti-gnosis technology. Thanks for the backup, Cosmos. I'm really glad to see you react like that. Empathizing with the feelings of others is a major factor in human relationships. Although I do not believe that the current situation called for me to act in an empathetic manner, I am pleased to be of service to you. <laughs> I think Cosmos is really funny. Too bad she doesn't take instruction very well. I never got to meet Daddy. But he used to talk to me all the time before I was born. It's all a little hazy, but I remember him telling me that I could become a real person if I did good deeds. Really? That's a wonderful memory to have. Uh-huh. Chief! Great news! After this ship arrives at the Kukai Foundation, they're gonna take us to Second Milsha. <laughs> Second Milsha? Really? Apparently, they have some work to take care of out there. The captain's still whining about repairing the Elsa, but... Some work? I wonder... Huh? Well, I'm sure they've got their own reasons, but don't you think it's a little strange that everyone's heading for Milsha? Not really. It's probably just a coincidence. I'm just glad we saved some money. Not to mention that this ship's a million times better equipped than the Elsa. And we'll have nothing to worry about if we run into the Gnosis again. Hey, speaking of which, did you check out your room? They all have jacuzzis and mini bars and... Hey, what's wrong, Chief? <sighs> nothing, nothing. I'm just jealous of how easily swayed you are.
here says, I wonder if Momo's okay. Nothing too interesting here. Maybe I have to go somewhere else. says looks like maybe the hangar this place is gigantic I really wish this game would just tell me what the hell I'm supposed to do next. Well, we've been to the hangar and the bridge. I went to the residential area offline. And the park. So, maybe the dock or the isolation area. I think I started at the dock though. Maybe I need to sleep.
That's the Kukai Foundation. They sure know how to spend their money. I can't wait to see the Durandal turn into a skyscraper. It's so beautiful. What? We're going to dock just like this? This ship's supposedly one of the most famous landmarks in the Foundation. I saw it in a travel guide on the Elsa. Oh, really? I'd never know. I don't check out vacation guides very often. Oh, look! We're docking! New Year's Eve is the best time to visit. The evening metropolis is quite a sight to behold with all her lights. Gainan Kukai, the managing director of the Kukai Foundation. Huh? Huh? Junior? What was that? Uh, nothing. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Kukai Foundation. I heard about your situation from Captain Matthews in Chaos. Is everything all right? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you for all your help. Enjoy your stay. What's wrong with me? Acting so rudely towards someone I just met. And you must be Momo. I've received word from Yuri Mizrahi of the Contact Subcommittee. We'll make sure you get to Milsha safely. From Mommy? Right. She told me to take good care of you. Can I talk to her? Well, she seemed pretty busy. Oh, I see. Why doesn't Mommy ever want to see me? I'll let you know as soon as I hear from her again. All right. Thank you very much. It can't be. That android Cosmos, she's got an incredible amount of potential, you know. There's no way she's just a prototype. I'm also concerned about how she resonated with the emulators. The Hilbert effect. I heard they lost the archetype, but it looks like there's more to this than it seems. And don't forget about her engineer. What was her name? Xion? I think she might be onto us. And our powers. No way. She's just an ordinary human. She might not be as ordinary as you think. I doubt it. She seems normal enough to me. I guess it's possible, though. After all, she's involved in the highest classified part of that project. The same one Helmer's involved in. The Zohar Project. Listen. Why don't we... lay off the Mizrahi talk for a while? Hmm. <laughs> Concerned about that Momo girl? Don't look at me like that! You think she likes being called the child of a madman? After all, we were both there when Mizrahi finally met his end. We saw what happened. You know that girl's a realian. Her memory might be imprinted with something. So you're saying the image she holds of Mizrahi is a false one? I don't know. That's why I want you to lay off when you're around her. At least for now, anyway. If you're that concerned about her, 
Why don't you invite her down to the beach? I'm sure it'll help take her mind off of things. Man! I told you! It's not like that! Hey. What's this? Man, it's a stainless steel finished Makalov! With the original box and everything! I won it at a Lion's Heart auction. It was part of their antique weapons collection. This isn't like you. You're up to something. Not at all. I just thought I'd reward you for all the hard work you've done for us recently. Have I gone too far? <laughs> Don't go shooting that thing all over the place. Remember, you're older than I am. Try to act like it once in a while, all right? <laughs> Sweet! It's open. Chief, we better get going soon. Yeah. What's wrong? Maybe it's just me, but you've been acting gloomy ever since we boarded this ship. Hmm? No. Really, it's nothing. What? You really think I'm acting like that? Yep. No doubt about it. Hmm. See? Just like that. <laughs> oh, I just have a lot on my mind. I'm sure that's all it is. Are you sure? If something's bothering you, I'd be more than happy to listen. Hey, Shion! <laughs> Let's go out and play! Hmm? I'll wait for you over at the shuttle launch, so hurry, okay? See you there! Mm-hmm. Alan says he's headed to the launch pad, so I'm guessing that's where we go next.
Xi'an, would you laugh at me if I told you that I think she has a heart? Cosmos? Showing emotional behavior? I've run across some interesting phenomena. It's still pretty weak, of course. Almost like a tiny little pulse. Really? We should definitely keep an eye on that. Cosmos elemental data structure duplicates that of the human brain. So something like that's certainly not out of the question. She was empathizing with Momo back there. I wonder what her subconscious waves were like. Flatline. Oh well, nothing here at all. Well, what's the matter, Chief? You didn't come down to the beach just to stare at a screen all day, did you? Come on, Xi'an. Why don't you come and play with us? Sorry. In a bit. Are you working on Cosmos? It must be really tough. Ah, Cosmos. She's got a lot of black box areas that even we can't analyze. Black box? Yeah. We're painstakingly analyzing her bit by bit so that we can recreate her original form again. The only person who knew everything about Cosmos was Kevin. <sighs> Say, Alan, do you think Guinan and Junior are father and son? They look a little too far apart in age to be brothers. I've heard rumors here and there. Some say Guinan cloned himself, while others say Junior's his illegitimate son, or... I don't think he's a clone. Their genome arrays are a little too different for that. Wow! You can actually see that, Momo? I'm an observational realian. They're more than just siblings, or father and son. But at the same time, they're not identical either. Is that sort of thing possible? Their DNA only has to differ by 0.1% to make them different people, right? Hey, who's an illegitimate son? Uh, man, this beach is really great. It doesn't feel artificial at all. It's our latest product. You can even change the weather. You can't have blue skies all the time, right? What you talking about? Representative Helmer. Busy as always, I see. Well, hello, Negrito. How are things going? Hmm. I don't really care for that name. My apologies. I'm still not accustomed to calling you Guinan. So, how can I help you? We're currently headed your way, and we're carrying an unusual package. So I thought it best to inform you. Oh? We secured it from an unexpected source. The Federation cruiser Woglinde. It's an emulator. The twelfth one. That matches the Utic records. Right. There's no question that it's responsible for the planetary disappearance. Assuming they haven't constructed any more, that's all of them. Aside from the original, of course. That's clearly impossible. Now that the only man who can create them is no longer alive. True enough. And one more thing. We have the Contact Subcommittee's 100 series prototype. How did that wind up in your hands? 
One of our passenger freighters rescued her 76 hours ago. Is the ability to attract that sort of coincidence another one of your special powers? Not a coincidence, but a probability, as a certain acquaintance might say. Anyway, I'm concerned with what the UTIC organization is up to. You may want to step up your precautions. I'll see what I can sniff out from the UMN Administration Bureau. We can locate any large-scale gate jumps from there. Excellent idea. Assuming they have no emulators in their possession. The odds are that they'll go after the original sealed on old Milsha. Not to mention... Udu. I don't know what their ultimate goal is. But we can't allow that thing to reawaken again, no matter what. Understood. We'll prepare for your arrival. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I guess Alan's gonna check on Cosmos. Sian also says she should take a nap or something. Doggies, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't really understand that. <clears throat> like, why does anyone care what the gays are doing? Ziggy says, I just came to see how you were doing. Which is a waste of dialogue, in my opinion. That's psychotic. these AGWS things very much. I guess I have three of them now somehow. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm getting them from. Yeah, that's kind of bizarre, but what do I know? These are like accessories, I guess. I don't know what those cards are for either, but whatevs. into the 
this is some kind of robot academy. Who knows? I certainly don't. But yeah, people have gone kind of fucking collectively insane since the pandemic, so... I don't know. I heard in a psychology class that pedophiles are not as interested in the gender or sex of the child as they are just into children, but I don't know how true that is. I'm not out here trying to kidnap kids. I'm too tired. Iron Man, huh? What is this place? Hmm. Is this like an arena? In any case, it doesn't seem like I can do anything in here right now. Iron something. Yeah. Hmm. Launch pad. Maybe that's how we get back up to the thingy. Yeah, I think we find a hotel here and sleep or something. It's kind of amusing too, because so many younger gay people, like, don't understand the hardship that the preceding generations went through for them to be able to survive in a way that's like more like, oh, you're a normal person sort of thing. I guess I can't go back there. You're the director's guest, so make yourselves at home. Okay. Ah, I feel much better. Alan's probably waiting. I better hurry back to the Elsa and start the maintenance on Cosmos. Okay.
I guess I can get some kind of new attack if I turn in some robot arm items or something. I don't think I have them though. Special items. I only have the one and it says I need to have two of them. Eh, whatevs. This is a bakery. Hmm. But where am I supposed to be going? guide is written in a way that's very long-winded. Okay, I guess I just go back to the dock, maybe. I don't really want to mess around in the town too much. Yeah, it's not shocking. I don't understand how the sentiment has changed so drastically and for what purpose or reason. The conservatives have just lost their collective minds and... Yikes.
Yeah, and I'm kind of, I'm sure Elon failing to regulate Twitter has a lot to do with that. Alrighty, looks like we're going to do some maintenance on Cosmos. Current output is 5.806 LPP, not even 3% of the required levels. In other words, you're saying it's impossible to open the door to Lost Jerusalem. Open the door? It's doubtful whether we can even find it. I've told you repeatedly that the emulators were mere supplements. You're the one who ignored that. Because of you, we've lost a valuable asset. I've done what I can with what we have, but it's not going to make much difference. Even Mizrahi couldn't pull this off without the original. So, have you finally come to acknowledge that lunatic's work? I'm just being objective. No one in the universe is as knowledgeable in this field as he was. We can't keep our commander waiting any longer. We'll proceed with Plan 401. Plan 401, huh? That seems a bit extreme to me. The 100 series that Helmer's protege is babysitting, not only does it contain the entire record of Mizrahi's research, but the access code for the UMN transfer column to the sealed area of Old Milsha also resides in it. Treat it too roughly, and you'll lose everything. I'm well aware of the importance of Milsha and the Y data. That's why I'm using him. I do not like him. His eyes share the same look as Mizrahi's. The same as yours. <laughs> well, I'll be waiting for the good news. Pelagri, secure a channel to our commander. I want to report this, and discuss our plans for manipulating the committee. I see. So what do you want me to do? The situation is proceeding as planned. Don't interfere with it for now. Of course. I can't imagine the Second Milshan government and the Kukai Foundation will simply hand it over. If this situation warrants, we may have to use the Song of Nephilim. Now this is a surprise. I thought you hated it with a passion. I'm just saying even your toys have their uses. Then why don't you join me? We can enjoy the show together. Thanks, I'll pass. I don't share your perverse taste in hobbies. <laughs> 
Yeah, right, you gutless bastard. Albedo. A URTV. A monster born of life recycling. There are plenty of mentally unstable life recycling variants out there. Just as Cherenkov was one of them. If he starts getting impatient and moves on his own... You needn't worry about that. Time means nothing to him. The only thing that interests him is that realia. Are you really going to use the Song of Nephilim? Pellegree, have you ever heard it? That song draws everything unto madness. Milsha, I never thought I'd come back under these situations. Chief, is something wrong? Huh? Uh... Oh no, it's uh, nothing. How's that, Cosmos? Fine. There are no problems. Please continue. And once again, it's nothing. We will soon be entering the Milshan star system. We will be entering orbit at 1400 hours local time. Second Milsha spaceport flight control, transmitting flight plan, requesting permission to dock. Hey, Momo. Yes, what is it? We'll be going our separate ways once we get to second Milsha, right? Yes. I don't know if Reallians believe in carrying charms or not, but... Here, take this. It's for luck. It's so pretty. What is it? It's a bullet from a long time ago. Look. It's got a good luck phrase on it. Sayonara, baby! Thank you. I'll keep it safe. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Huh? Ah, there we go. Try it on. You can do things like that, too? That's wonderful! It kind of tires me out a bit, though. What a strange welcome! Are they escorting us in this time? They're blocking the way? <sighs> this is no welcome. <laughs> As you can see from this video, the Kukai Foundation has engaged in what is clearly an act of aggression against the 117th Marine Division. From the events that followed, we can only come to the conclusion that this was an act of rebellion orchestrated by the Foundation's creators, the Second Milshan Government. In light of these troubling events, we hereby enter a motion for the following. Per Article 104, an emergency suspension of the vested rights of Second Milsha's autonomous government. 
I'd like to add that the 422nd Fleet from Gedalia has been dispatched to the scene in order to surround and contain both the Kukai Foundation and Second Milsha. Hold on there. Won't that constitute an unauthorized use of force? The deployment is in accordance with the Federation Emergency Powers Act. It is fully within our powers. I would think that the Kukai Foundation possessing that level of weaponry is a far greater problem in and of itself. Perhaps they were heroes during the conflict, or whatever in the past. But the current situation is a result of letting them have their way for so long. The Zohar belong to the entire Federation. Why should Second Milsha have sole control? The decision to turn the artifacts of Old Milsha over to an impartial third party was decided by vote 14 years ago. We're talking about the dangers of it being monopolized by a corporation! The Kukai Foundation was converted after the completion of the post-war cleanup and their own disarmament. Since taking on their current name and converting to a business, their primary source of income has become entertainment and tourism. How could they possibly have a vested interest in the Zohar? You call that disarmed? It's just enough for self-defense. Think back to the reason the organization was formed. Not only that, we can't ignore their recent achievements against the Gnosis. Can we be certain these accusations aren't merely jealousy on the part of a state that didn't receive post-war government handouts? How dare you! I've heard rumors that Milsha was secretly involved not only with the current planetary disappearance case, but also with other recent developments, including the Anti-Gnosis Sohar project. I'd like to hear the contact subcommittee's thoughts on all this. Dr. Mizrahi? We moved the 100 series Realian to second Milsha in accordance with the original plan. We're following the protocols. But I wonder... Have you forgotten that it was Milsha that produced the lunatic that summoned the Gnosis and tried to destroy the Federation? I sympathize with your desire to defend your late husband, but... Perhaps you are too deeply involved in this situation. I would not have expected my presence here to be misconstrued in such a manner. Oh, really? That this is just really to that our governmental policy. You will stand the Federation if you continue. Jealousy on the part of the state, that's all Order! Order! We've just patched in with Representative Helmer. I'd like to hear about the situation from the second Milshan government. Well, Representative Helmer? against Federation vessels? Furthermore, should the Milshan government allow the Kukai Foundation to dock the Durandal, we will issue a state of emergency notice under Article 2384, Chapter 115, Part 18, but Conspiracy what in the world to is Aid going Insurrection. On? It looks like they think the Durandal conspired with the Milshan government in an attack on the Federation fleet. Huh? What Federation fleet? Hey, check out the network news on the sub-monitor! You're not gonna believe this! On the morning of the 21st, it appears that the 177th Marine Division flagship Woglinde of the Galaxy Federation's Tessadora Division came under attack by a heavily armed ship belonging to the Kukai Foundation. The Woglinde? What? I thought the Gnosis attack had been reported already. The company has been identified as operating in conjunction with the second Milshan government. Considerations for the possibility of treason have forced the Federation Parliament to dispatch... They did a good job doctoring that video. But how did they synchronize the battle coordinates as well? Damn! That's from when we fought the UTIC organization! Those bastards were recording it! I see. That would explain how the absolute coordinates match. I guess that's their indisputable proof. Even I'm starting to think that we did it. Considering the situation, you don't sound very worried. In any event, this is confirmation that the remnants of the UTIC organization have infiltrated both the Federation government and the military. Which means... their next target is... This is a 
such a blatant lie, it's ludicrous. As survivors, if we testify... They'll just claim that you survived because you were in on the conspiracy. This is insane! Do you think this is why Headquarters hasn't communicated with us? Lapis Roman of the Galaxy Federation Special Ops Command Headquarters, Intelligence Bureau. I hereby place this ship under custody of the Galaxy Federation. I understand you're from the Woglinde. I'll take you in as witnesses. All vector property will be temporarily confiscated as evidence. Cosmos. Here's the 100 series Realian under warrant. Hey, don't hurt her! Detain them in a single room and watch them carefully. All of them? Splitting them up will only serve to underman our guard posts. Investigate as much of the ship as possible before we rendezvous with the others. Yes, ma'am! Gainan Kukai, you are hereby under arrest for suspicion of treason against the Galaxy Federation. Come with me. As you wish. It's all orchestrated too well. Huh? The fleet deployment came too quickly. They must have been prepared to ensure that Momo would return to them, regardless of what happened. Or perhaps ensnaring second Milsha was part of their plan from the very beginning. As a neutral territory, second Milsha was invested with a whole bunch of rights and legal privileges after the Milshan conflict. There are a whole lot of folks who still have problems with that. Even outside of the UTIC organization. The asteroid where Momo was imprisoned. I wondered where the information about that place came from. Now it seems like it was all part of the plan from the very beginning. Do you mean from when Mommy sent you to rescue me? You don't think there are UTIC members within the subcommittee itself? It's not inconceivable. Perhaps it was the very person who arranged for Momo's rescue, Dr. Yuri Mizrahi herself. No! Mommy would never do something like that! Alan! I, uh... Sorry. Open it. Helmer? Sorry to keep you waiting, Guinan. I'm in a somewhat difficult position myself at the moment, but I'm doing what I can with the Federation Parliament. Now the woman beside you is Captain Lapis Roman. Several years ago, I sent her to infiltrate the military in order to keep tabs on the UTIC members within it. She is one of my most trusted subordinates. Always prepared, aren't you? Caution is something that comes naturally with age. Captain Roman will investigate the Durandal's records before someone modifies them. Please assist her. Understood. I'll give her the Durandal's master key. Sir. There's an EPR com from the CEO of Vector. Vector? All right, I'll take it. If you'll excuse me, I'll let you know if there are any developments. Busy as always. Not half as much as you. It's good to see you again, Representative Helmer. Likewise, Mr. Wilhelm. 
We haven't spoken since you resigned as Executive Committee Director. I'm well aware of the situation. Allow me to make a recommendation to the Parliament as well. Mr. Wilhelm, you're too kind. Actually, my concerns have even prompted me to dispatch the Damarung, which is currently underway to the Milshan system. Your concerns? This incident. Surely you've realized by now that... There's no question of the UTIC organization's involvement in it. Exactly. Given that, it can only mean they're after one thing. The original Zohar in stasis on Milsha, and... Udu. We can't allow that to be awakened again. I believe our firm's Cosmos and its related staff are currently in your care. I apologize, Mr. Wilhelm. I'm afraid the link between the Kukai Foundation and the Second Milshan government is... Ah, of course. Then please pass a message on to Guinan for me. Surely that would be acceptable? That much I can do. Tell him that we'll lend him Cosmos for a while, and he can use her as he sees fit. We still have time before the Zohar project commences, and in the worst-case scenario, she'll definitely be of use. We'll have the second R&D division, and the Tactical Sim Lab provide support. Are you sure? Isn't that top secret? It's a calculated risk. From our point of view, the more real-world data we get, the better. All right. I'll convey your message to Master Guinan. Thank you. Good day, then. Udu. The preliminary inquiry shall now begin. I am an agent working for Representative Helmer of the Second Milshan Parliament. He's also with us. We can go into detail later, but for now I'll just debrief you on the current situation. You are presently under the custody of the Federation government and the military. I'll be honest with you. The way things are now, within a few hours, she'll be turned over to anti-Milshan forces. Specifically, the UTIC organization. Soon after, the second Milshan government will be stripped of all its authority. At this moment, Representative Helmer is working with the leaders of the Milshan Parliament to buy us additional time. However, our opponent's skillful manipulation requires us to find concrete proof of your innocence. But how? That's the question. We need something that would give conclusive evidence of your innocence. Conclusive evidence? What about the Woglinde's black box? We've already recovered that. Unfortunately, sometime after the final gate out, it was modified to be exactly the same as the video recording down to the time access. Not to mention, I shot up the database on that UTIC battleship. What about the Durandal's database? A record of the battle against the UTIC should still be there. Can't we use that to prove our innocence? Is that a standard database? Yeah. Ah. Uh. Is that a problem? Yes. Standard databases are too easily modified. I'm not certain how reliable they would be as evidence. If we had something that even the owner couldn't change, say, a system with a AAA class encryption, then maybe. What? AAA? You don't find systems with that kind of protection just lying around? Or something like that. You need the Federation government's mother frame, or the UMN operating system. We... what? We have one. Oh. Cosmos. Cosmos? Yes. Cosmos database has a recording of the battle against the Gnosis on board the Woglinde. If we enter that as evidence... 
Yeah, but in order to copy the record, we need the keys from both the Federation government and headquarters. By diving into the Encephalon and experiencing the record ourselves, we can make a copy through the connection gear. Uh, but that's impossible without the dive equipment. How about the service module simple dive unit? You've got to be kidding. Besides, that's a violation of protocol. We don't have any other choice, do we? Oh, I am so sick and tired of protocol. But... The real question is, how do we get to Cosmos? That'll open any locked doors you come across. I'll just say that we were careless. But to make it look legitimate, you'll need to knock me out. You sure? Otherwise, no one would believe it, right? You have a point. Go easy on me, okay? Forgive me. Bloodshed. Guess we need to get back to the Elsa. But we gotta find our weapons first.
Well, it looks like we got our equipment, so that's good. idea?
Stand down. I don't want meaningless bloodshed.
Here we go. Alan, handle back up for me, all right? Roger. Opening interconnection. Get a grip. Don't worry. I'll back you up no matter what happens. Thanks. Ready, Cosmos? All right, Xion. Let's go home. We're not going to see Mom? No. Not today. We'll visit her tomorrow, okay? Okay. Wait. Don't go. You cannot go. <gasps> That's right. This was the last day you spent together with your father. I've been waiting a long time for you. We have much to talk about. See, it would appear that this is more than just a hallucination. What is this place? Do you recognize it? Junior? What? <gasps> I'm asking you if you recognize this place. Yeah, I do. If this isn't an illusion, 
And my memory's correct. This is... Milsha. From 14 years ago. Where are you going? I wonder what's troubling him. It looks as though he's trying to chase after those people. I'm sure he has his reasons. Nonetheless, we don't know what's going on, and we can't let him go off alone. You've been waiting? For us? Chaos? Alan? Chief? Where are we? Who are you? I am Nephilim. That's what I have been called ever since I existed in this form. Watch the enemy closely and react quickly. the enemy closely and react quickly.
fine. Junior? I said I'm fine! <gasps> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Damn it. What the hell is this? What's going on here? So you're saying this really is Milsha? Yes. A world of unbroken memories slumber at the depths of your consciousness. Cosmos has sensed this and recreated it. This world, it is also Cosmos memory as well. Cosmos memory? No, that's not... Memories do not belong solely to one person. And they are not fixed to just one location. No, I mean... It's... The original Cosmos was... Destroyed during that incident two years ago. Joyful memories form only one half of the whole. Only when they are combined together with the other half can your consciousness truly take form. You must know. All of you must accept the entirety of your memories. Accept our memories? You must. Return to Milsha once again. Please tell me, why must I go to Milsha? Only Cosmos knows the answer to that question. She is waiting for you there. Cosmos is... out there? Hey, wait up! Chief! Are you sure this is what you want? There is no turning back. is vital to her. And to you as well? What will you do?
a good idea. Born again anew.
watch the enemy closely and react quickly. Organization Central Tower. Labyrinthos. Labyrinthos? Hallelujah! And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. That voice... that's... That's Daddy! Daddy! What? Oh, stop. Where are you going? Let me go! Daddy! Daddy's calling for me! Daddy? Is that really him? That's your and king is right. And hell Without a doubt. Into so the lake that's of fire. your king, Miss Rai. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Rejoice, all ye! The time for feasting has come.
All this before me. Is this really Milsha from 14 years ago? Inventions would come in 
happy. I guess there's no choice but to fight. Bloodshed. Is that... a church? Junior! How did you all get here? Beats me. As soon as you dived, everything went all hazy. And the next thing I knew, we were here. After that, there were all sorts of visions. Did we all get pulled into the Chief's Encephalon dive? That's impossible. None of you were connected. If Cosmos Oscillation Pulse caused a countercurrent to flow through the dive unit, it's not inconceivable. The ones we use are non-contact types, after all. Even if that were the case, the simple dive unit couldn't handle that great a load. There would have to be some other external force. The load. I've been waiting a long time for all of you. <gasps> Regardless of how we got here, this is Cosmos Mainframe. Our memories found a common resonance within her, 
and resulted in the creation of this world. That's what it feels like to me. But I don't remember ever being in a place like this. I wonder if perhaps memories, in other words, events that occurred in the past, become stronger, more selective, and gain a higher priority when they resonate with others that share identical axes in time and space. If you think about it in those terms, it isn't quite so odd that both my memories and those of Alan are not reflected here. So, what you're saying is, this world is constantly changing based on the experiences people share in time and space? A world made up of our past, as glimpsed through the mind of Cosmos. So, it's all an illusion? There's no difference between illusion and reality to the person experiencing it. This is no illusion. Chief. All of you must accept the entirety of your memories. So that's what she meant. Someone's here. Those clothes. Is she a Reallian? Yes. She definitely seems to be a Reallian, but I also sense something different. Is this based on one of our memories too, Chief? Chief? Are you... a Reallian? Yes. My name is Febronia. I came to take care of this church because I longed for a place where Reallians could find peace. Febronia? Do you know her?
is inside of the chief's soul? treatment facility a place you know well the room where mom was hospitalized yes a place where painful sorrowful memories linger I wonder can you face them I <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Show me, define me. <laughs> I am the infinite telemiraz. I am not an anti-existence. I am the perfect chain. <laughs>
I am sorry, Xion. I know it was hard for you. But there are two of you. The woman sitting over there isn't me. It's just an image created for the girls. An illusion. This is their world. Created solely for Cecily and Kat. I am using Cosmos Encephalon construction abilities to show it to all of you. But they seem to be so happy. Would you say that if you were to see this? Huh? This is just an illusion that traps them here. A binding spell created by mankind to control the Zohar. But as far as they know, this world is reality. I want you to release my sisters. Please, for the future of the Realians as well. The future of the Realians? Not just for their future, but for the future of humans, non-humans, and all matter of living consciousness. Feb and I can only exist in this world of consciousness. We can only come into contact with the real world for a short time. That is why I called for all of you, so that the future may be changed. Change? The future? Look. of the space-time anomaly that engulfed Milsha 14 years ago. What you just saw was a vision of the future, where Udu encounters Cosmos in the form in which she was meant to be. Udu will awaken soon. He feeds upon the consciousness of those who intend to awaken him, as well as those wish to seek him. It's gonna wake up... soon! The future you just saw is but one of an infinite set of potential phenomena. But that does not mean that the future is already set. Even the smallest of waves can spread throughout the whole. Phenomena change with every moment just like a drifting wave. Are you saying that we're that wave? Yet before it all begins, I wanted you to face your pasts. But I see you are not ready yet. I am sorry. But why us? Xi'an, you were once touched by a Gnosis. Huh? Despite that, you remain unchanged, the same as before. 
That is why. That's why? There will be a time when I can discuss why. If you go back to Melsha, the place where it all began, then you will see. Wait! Cosmos. So, this is your... Ye shall be as gods. Disarming. Subconscious domain protection. Morning, Cosmos. Good morning, Xi'an. Well, looks like we all managed to make it back. Chief! Oh, I'm so relieved you're okay. Uh, Alan? I present to you the memory bank data from the Anti-Gnosis Humanoid Weapons System KPX Cosmos. Protection level AAA, with no possibility of alteration. Memory bank data accepted. Please remain within the Milshan star system until you're cleared of all charges. Sure glad that escapade's over and done with. You don't look very happy. Did something happen? Huh? Yeah. You could say that. I still can't believe it. We've got another friend of yours to release, too. Ah, uh, Master Guinan. Master Guinan! Oh. <laughs> hey. You've done well. Ah, uh, no big deal. But... It sure brought back a lot of bad memories. Hey, Shion. That girl. She called herself Nephilim, right? Uh... Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, but... Hmm... What's wrong? Well... If that girl is somehow connected to what I'm thinking of... ...then things are gonna get real busy real soon.
she was crying, wasn't she? I think that's only the second time I've ever seen her cry. No matter what happens, she never shares her pain with anyone. It's times like these when I'm reminded that I'm nothing but a subordinate to her. I... I wish I could take her tears away. Maybe. Someday. You will, Alan. Someday. Easy for you to say. You don't know a thing about us. Um, I'm sorry. It's just... I didn't mean to say that. We've only known each other for a short while. But I can see that you have a good heart, Alan. You're too nice, Chaos. Kindness. At times, it binds us. But still... They've completed their review of Cosmos' subconscious domain records today, and the Federation fleet is preparing to leave the area. The charges against Second Milsha and the Kukai Foundation will be officially dropped tomorrow. That's quite a job you pulled off there. We couldn't have done it without you. You have my thanks. So, Mizrahi's 100 series seems to be quite important. Yes. I doubt they'll stand by and let her go that easily. You'd better be careful. Right. Now, I wonder what they're going to try next. <sighs> I can't believe I just handed over top secret company info to the Federation without permission. I am so fired. Momo. She looks so sad. Chief. So, um, why don't we go grab a bite to eat? Shelly told me about this great cafe. I'm sorry. I don't have much of an appetite right now. I guess I'm not quite myself, either. Nephilim, Fabronia, and her sisters. What does she mean? Release them. And Cosmos and Udu. All this facing the past stuff. What am I supposed to do? Oh. I don't understand any of it. Shion says I was too cold to Alan, so I should apologize to him. I wonder where he went. Anyways, this looks like a good place to stop, so I am going to cut the broadcast here. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.